Welcome to the Astro Psyche. This is your weekly astrology forecast for February 19th through the 25th. The main event this week is a full moon in Virgo. So a culmination around the things that we've been working on and especially a focus around the practical goals, the practical matters of life, and how we find meaning and purpose in our lives. That's really a highlight this week. And then um, we're also continuing our relational healing process with Venus and Mars making a conjunction in Aquarius um, very close by Pluto this week. So there's a lot of energy here around uh, healing, personal growth, self-development, things that maybe got kicked up in the last month or so. And then also a, a sense of wanting to find uh, purposeful healing with the, the full moon here as well. So we're going to talk about all of that and what to expect this week so that you can really make the most out of this week in your life. Uh, my name is Shauna McGrath. I'm a psychotherapist and astrologer. I'm so happy to have you here and uh, yeah, to share the astrology with you. So um, let's let's first talk about Venus Mars because that is a very uh, dynamic energy. And I think that it's also like, yes, we're having a full moon, full moon in Virgo, and that's happening um, while we're in an environment of Venus, Mars, Pluto being very active. So that gives a kind of flavor to this particular full moon. So Venus is the planet of relationships, beauty, aesthetics, the things that we find alluring, attractive, pleasing, and that, that bring us a, an inner sense of um, delight and like uh, eroticism, the things that make us feel more alive, that connect us to our senses or our sensory experience. And then also the things that simply uh, help us to feel more of a sense of balance and equilibrium, a sense of calm, um, things that help to regulate our nervous system. These are all Venus things. And then um, Venus is also very connected to, uh, to themes around values, money, in that um, we spend our money on things that we value, we feel valuable, or not depending on um, the the amount of money or skills or assets that we have sometimes. And uh, at a deeper, more psychological layer, Venus is also very much about the sense of inherent self-worth outside of the material things, but the, the rooted sense of worth and value that we feel as a human. And uh Whenever there's a Venus aspect, there is a call to heal relationally or to connect relationally, meaning that um, not just that we're in contact with others or that we're around others, but that we feel we feel this tangible sense of feeling seen or heard, feeling connected uh, with others. Um, and maybe if there has been an inconnect, uh, not an inconnection, <laughs> I don't think that's a word. Uh, if there's been a lack of connection or a connection that feels uh, challenging or construed in some way, Venus can help to bring some ease, some heal, some repair to that situation. Um, now, when we're talking, so I realized I just said a lot of things about Venus, but I think that's really important because that is the core of Venus. And um, Venus is coming into contact with, um, in, in the zodiac, with Mars. And Mars is very different. Mars is about uh, directiveness, moving toward. It's about saying, this is what I'm going to do. It's very eye-focused. It's more about our will, our drive, our initiative tends to be um, 
it tends to be themes that originate or arise from the self. And I think that we can think of Mars maybe as self-oriented. And at the same time, Mars is also that part of the self, our inner um, drive that can get activated when we want to fight for someone or fight for something else, when we want to be an advocate. So it doesn't always have to be um, individual or self-focused, uh, but, but it kind of feels more like there is this energy that arises from within with Mars versus with Venus. There's something that, uh, that, that is outside that calls to us or that, uh, that we're calling to it, the, where it's more of the two meeting with Venus, whereas Mars, there's something that, uh, that comes up that almost propels us. And so this week we're having these two come together, this being drawn towards something and then being propelled to do something. Mars is very much about doing. And uh, this is happening in Aquarius with Pluto. Uh, so Venus and Mars um, have been hovering around Pluto since they moved into Aquarius in the last week or so. And so um, Venus and Pluto, or sorry, um, Venus and Mars are creating and activating a Pluto experience, which is connected with uh, revealing the unconscious, with psychology, with understanding the root of something that um, maybe has been confusing or hidden or secret even in some ways. And I think when we have this, there's a lot that can get churned up relationally, Venus, and then um, there's a lot that can get churned up related to our drive, our will, our sense of agency to fight for something or to draw boundaries around something, which is Mars. And so I think that... Um, Needs, wants, desires, boundaries, those are all things that can come up this week um, that, that actually um, that I would imagine have been coming up that um, whether that is something external in your life or something that you've been thinking about. And I think that this week there's this call to do something to move um, toward or maybe away from something. And so I just would notice um, what, I wonder what that is for you. And I think that um, sometimes it can feel really confusing to know what the thing is, especially when we have um, unconscious material that's getting activated. And um, What's actually kind of nice about this is that it is in the sign of Aquarius, which tends to, um, which tends to help us think about things. It's an air sign versus, you know, this is not happening in um, like Pisces, where there would maybe be more of a sense of flooding with emotions or getting confused. Not that Pisces, that that's all that Pisces is, but I think that uh, there can be a sense of being able to figure things out very rapidly when we're talking about this happening in Aquarius. Um, and there can also be a tendency to overly analyze something uh, versus uh, like, like focusing more on figuring it out with the mind versus feeling into it. And so that might be a part of the, the work or the process this week is to, um, to like, even just now it's like, oh, I need to take a breath because it was like talking, um, to, yeah, to like take a breath, to, um, notice what it is that you're actually feeling versus what you're thinking in this scenario. And, um, what are you feeling called towards? What is your instinct telling you? What is true for you? And that, you know, maybe takes some time and, and some sleep. But I think that um, there's something here that's calling for a sense of 
action or agency or um, connecting with with someone or maybe um, a group of folks in a way that uh, that is first and foremost um, authentic and real as much as you can, Pluto, especially Pluto in Aquarius. And then uh, what are your needs? What are your desires? And what are some of the non-negotiables that you have? Um, and I don't know, maybe this is something that is more of an internal process versus an external process for you. So uh, so those are my thoughts on <laughs> uh, Venus, Mars, Pluto together. Uh, this is kind of, this feels like the, the maybe exclamation point or the last part in a series of um, a journey through Pluto. Um, with Pluto having, you know, very, just very recently moved into Aquarius. And then we had a new moon in Aquarius with Pluto. And then we had Mercury, Venus, and Mars all move into Aquarius. And so it kind of felt like this, um, the last couple of months, this like package of, uh, of Pluto being very active, meaning that there uh, was more situations where maybe uh, where there has been more transformation, where more has come up, more has been revealed to you, maybe things that you didn't know, maybe things that were very activating, and maybe things that um, are ultimately a part of the healing process, but maybe they're, like with Pluto, there tend to, tends to be a sort of, um, there can be kind of like a removal of something that's covering the truth of something, if that kind of makes sense. And that can be kind of uncomfortable, but it can also be very revealing and uh, sort of cathartic in a way when we really get to the, the root of the thing. Um, and now you might be like, Shauna, I'm not feeling any of this. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's great. I, I think that um, Pluto... Uh, experiences in Pluto transits affect some of us more than others. Pluto, in some ways, can be intense and subtle at the same time uh, because it is about the unconscious. And the nature of the unconscious is that we don't know that we don't know it. It is not conscious. So, anyways, um, that that's that is happening this week. Now, um, Mercury. The mind, a symbol of the mind, a symbol of communication, symbol of uh, intuition and divination, how we speak with spirit or the other world, uh, this planet Mercury is moving from Aquarius into Pisces. And it's going to join the Sun and Saturn there. And so I, I think this is interesting and I really like this move, especially with the full moon, because this is our mind, our thought process, Mercury, moving from being very analytical in Aquarius to Pisces, which is more about feeling, experiences, being in the flow, um, gaining information through, um, <laughs> through altered states of consciousness, which I, I think can sound a little heady, but we have altered states of consciousness when we're going for a walk and our brain just clears because we're think we're processing things and um or even when we're driving and we sort of um you know like mentally go on autopilot for a moment so um mercury moving into pisces is an opportunity to think more in um, spatial non-linear terms and to problem solve and to even communicate that way versus um, analytical and linearly. Um, while Mercury is in Pisces over the next month or so, it's also a great time to um, explore or, uh, or revision um, or refresh your um, intuitive or meditation practices or any kind of ritual work that you do um, because this, all of those things are very conducive to Pisces, to exploring experiences of meditation or mindfulness or altered states um, 
being in flow states. Uh, now, we also have a full moon in Virgo that's happening on Saturday the 24th. It's exact at 4.30 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday the 24th of February. And uh, it's happening at about five degrees of Virgo, so pretty early in the sign. Uh, so full moons are, are a symbol of emotional, mental, soulful uh, culmination. So there's this feeling of things that we've been doing over the last month or over the last six months, or really any period of time um, where there's this sense of fullness or things coming together or kind of like a maximum capacity kind of point. And so this can be that uh, something that you're working on comes to a culmination. It can also simply emotionally feel like there's a lot going on, like there's a lot that's happening where um, maybe it just feels like a more busy time. I think that can happen month to month when we have a full moon. Uh, and so this is happening in the sign of Virgo because the sun just moved into Pisces. The moon is opposing it in Virgo. So happy birthday to all of my, my Pisces people. Um, so Virgo, Virgo is a sign when we're talking about, um, Virgo, uh, Virgo has themes around practicality purposefulness, and healing. Virgo is about looking at routines and rituals and how those things are healing for us, um, both proactively, like in the case of routines, we can have routines um, that that further our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health and well-being. And we can also have rituals, which are essentially some sort of system or routine or model that we've adapted that, um, that takes on a special sort of meaning or sacredness or purpose. That, that's kind of my <laughs> conceptualization, conceptualization of ritual. It's something that we do very specifically in a very specific way. And there is a feeling of sacredness to it. And it's done for a particular reason, which usually is connected with, um, with either honoring or furthering um, a sense of well-being can be, you know, honoring um, ancestors or, um, or spirit guides, things like this. But a lot of times it's simply for our own well-being. And so um, I'm getting off on a tangent, <laughs> but I, I think this is so important to include when we're thinking about Virgo, because yes, Virgo uh, stereotypically is about, um, analyzing things and looking at the process and uh, Virgo is very much about this capacity to um, be able to pull something apart and to really take something apart and to look at all of the pieces and then to put it back together and to know what um, that, that each piece is on purpose, that each piece is meaningful and important and that there's one thing that feeds into another thing and to, to really like understand a system. And um, this is very useful in healing and helping work or, or any kind of healing and helping process. Um, and so I think that when we have a full moon in Virgo, there can be a an opportunity, a potential to look at healing whether that's something that you want to do intentionally, if you want to take this opportunity to do a ritual or something for your healing, or maybe, I don't know, you wanna contemplate uh, what healing may mean to you. You may want to contemplate um, if there's something that you want to shift or change or accept 
in your life, what are the prerequisites for that to happen? And uh, how do you put yourself in, situa in a situation or situations to um, align with whatever that intention is, even if it's you know, simply acceptance or grieving something. How do you do that? What what exactly does that look like? I think that's one of the keys to Virgo too, is that it's about speci uh, specificity, um, being specific, and that that is not being specific for its own sake. That is being specific um, because there is a broader, um, there's a broader picture in mind with everything when we're talking about the Virgo world view. Uh, so yeah, so those are some ideas. I think that, uh, yes. Okay. So the other piece of this full moon is we just talked about Mercury, which is the ruler of this moon being the ruler of Virgo, Mercury moving into Pisces. And so it will be in Pisces on the day of this, um, full moon. And it will be opposite the moon. So it's like really keyed into this lunation. So we have kind of this um, like double um, paradox oppositional kind of energy because we have the sun and the moon opposite one another, always with a full moon. And we have Mercury, the ruler of the moon in Pisces, which is the sign opposite that the moon is in. So I think this is really interesting and intriguing. And it, it kind of feels like there's this added theme of um, really exploring your healing process or um, how you're intentionally living your life and maybe looking at other possibilities, looking at what puts you in a state of connection with yourself, which is Pisces. Um, there may be an element of how do you release, surrender, how do you grieve? These are all Pisces themes as well. Um, how to go with the flow and where is it in your life that you're being called to go with the flow? Again, Pisces. Um, Okay, so th those are the main things. I'm going to pull some tarot cards for us uh, and contemplate. Is there anything that I miss there? So yeah, it's it's kind of an interesting combo because Virgo and Pisces are, as a theme, are about really working with the mind and consciousness and uh, how we heal, how we process, how we, um, how we digest information or experiences. Uh, Virgo is very much about the process of um, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally digesting something. And then Pisces is about digesting experiences, digesting emotions. And uh, so, you know, how do we do that? Are, are there other things that we need to um, metaphorically digest? And then also the Venus, Mars, Pluto, that has more of a sharp energy to me. There's still this theme of healing with it, but it's much more about um, It feels like a, a very um, empowering kind of theme to me where there, there's this intensity, but but there's also a call for something. Uh, all right, so um, maybe there is a situation or something that is on your mind or on your heart. Uh, you can choose to hold that in your heart or you can... Just breathe, be in your body. If you like, you can pick a number between one and three, and that number will be a special card for you. Okay. 
Okay, so, oh, we have some good cards. I mean, they're always good cards, but. Okay, so. We have the lovers, the moon, and the five of swords. So I'm going to go through them one at a time. So first card is the lovers. Um, this is the, the deck is the tarot of spells and potions. And uh, to me, the lovers is about, feels very Aquarian actually. It's about uh, being in connection with other while maintaining your own sense of integrity and selfhood. And um, the lovers is sort of a paradox because it's like once, not once, but the more that you feel clear in your own integrity and who you are, and you have that, uh, in psychology, we would call it like a, a cohesive sense of self, um, which is more than just self-confidence, but it's kind of like your knowingness of your knowingness and your autonomy and your knowingness of who it is that you are at, at um, not at a material level, but, but at a feeling level, um, the more that you are connected to that place inside of you, the more that you can actually connect with others and the more that there can be very deep bonding with others. And of course, you know, all of us waver in and out of different, um, you know, states and experiences of that, but that's, that's really a big part of this card. Um, the imagery in this card, there's one person that's combing, brushing the other person's hair, and it's kind of like in little curlers. And they're sitting on the bed, just sort of, you know, chilling, hanging out. And then there's this um, angel outside the window that is looking over them, who they actually don't see. They don't see the angel. Uh, this card to me feels like, if we're taking this as the core issue, this card is like, Yeah, it's very much, feels very Venus, Mars, Pluto to me. It's about you being like, it's about you going more into yourself so that you can connect with the folks in your life. That's really kind of the main thing there. Okay, the second card I picked is the moon. Um, so I pulled this reversed also. And so this tells me there's like a little bit of confusion around the topic um, that it's reversed. So uh, the moon is a symbol of the unconscious. It's a symbol also that there's something that we don't know. Like there's even something that we don't know that we don't know. <laughs> and so this could be there is something about a scenario that you don't know. It could also be that there's a bit of fear or confusion that's swirling around here. And um, this card to me, as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking about how sometimes um, people who have a strong emphasis of Pisces in their birth chart, um, maybe they have... Um, especially moon and Pisces or sun, moon, or um, even like Mercury, Venus, or Mars, or rising, uh, there can sometimes be a tendency to go into fear states where there's kind of, it's kind of like the fear becomes this like big giant monster, <laughs> um, uh, or becomes like this big pit. And it's like um, the fear sort of takes on a mind of its own. And it, it, you know, there might be an objective, um, realistic fear there, but it sort of gets um, blown out of proportion, so to speak. I don't even know if I want to use that language. Blown out. It's kind of like it, it becomes bigger in the person's mind than maybe is what's actually happening in the physical level. So, um, 
So that might be happening. There might be a sense of fear. There might, it might be that you're working through the fear to process it. Um, I think that's also a symbol of the reversed is sometimes when we have a reversed card that's challenging, it can mean that we are like loosening the knot on whatever the issue is. In this case, the issue is confusion, not knowing, um, can also be unconscious dynamics that are in some way preventing us from living the life that we want. And we're kind of like figuring out what those are. Okay. And then the last card is the five of swords. So the five of swords is kind of an interesting card. It's usually, it's usually asking you to contemplate what it is that you actually want out of the situation. And it's usually an encouragement to, um, to either compromise or to look at what it is that you actually want to happen if there's an argument. It's kind of like, you know, you can, um, the common, uh, phrase with this card is you can win the battle but lose the war and um, I'm like not even a fan of that term when I'm saying it but it's like you can um, you can win an argument or a challenge with someone or something but then ultimately does that have repercussions that are that you don't want or that are not in your favor um, and so I actually want to read the guidebook for this one in particular. Uh, okay, Five of Swords. Sharp tongues hurt you, but you do not want to get into a skirmish. Um, you are not ready to ask for trouble. Leave your passions behind and look at the situation objectively. Okay. Okay, so I this is kind of what's coming to me as I'm looking at these. Okay, so there's something here around relationships and authenticity, which is the lovers. It's like this connection between you, yourself. This card also is very reminiscent of individuation or rather um, the individuation process. It's about you becoming more of who you are and then being able to be in community or connected to people without losing your sense of autonomy, but then also not feeling like an outsider at the same time. So there's something here around being yourself and then being with others. And there's a lot of confusion <laughs> around this, or maybe, maybe not a lot of confusion, but it's like, you're figuring it out. You're figuring out, oh my gosh, yes. The moon could also be a symbol of projection. Like maybe you're projecting onto other people, maybe other people are projecting onto you or something like that. There, there's, there's like, like the moon, the moon is literally, um, it does not have its own light. It is simply reflecting the light of the sun. So there's something like illusionary about it's un, it's not very clear so there's something here that's unclear around yourself relationships etc and then this is um whatever this situation is it's very important for you to look at it objectively and from um i would even say from a place of being regulated and um having a sense of mm, not ease, not calm. Those are the words that are coming to mind, but, but a sense of, um, inner clarity and a sense of groundedness. But I think regulation is really the right word here. Um, that you feel that you can see clearly and that, that all of, um, cause I think that a big part of this is that the fears are clouding something when when we feel afraid when we feel confused um when we're afraid of getting um cut off from the people that we love then there can be um confusion and spinning and the best thing for us is to 
do what we can to think clearly and objectively and this being the five of swords um swords being the mind there's even this element around um writing things down or talking through someone who um has an unbiased uh viewpoint or someone that feels safe for you to just kind of vent and process things and to figure things out okay uh i hope that was helpful i hope that you enjoyed this weekly video i'm wishing you such a wonderful week um again my name is shauna mcgrath i am a psychotherapist and astrologer and um I offer depth-oriented psychotherapy as well as astrological counseling for folks who are wanting support and healing through a variety of different situations in life. Uh, so if you want to find out more about me and my work, you can find that on my website, theastropsyche.com. Uh, wishing you a wonderful week, sending you lots of love, and I'll see you soon. Bye.